Welcome in to Monster Hunter World Lesson Series Episode 2. Like I've mentioned at the end of Lesson 1, or you know, as you've probably seen from the title and the thumbnail, this video is all about the 14 unique weapons. You know, just generally what they're capable of, and a little bit on their pros and cons. Please note that while I do play a number of weapons, I won't say that I'm experienced in every single one, so I'll give a little note on those that you should take a grain of salt with, you know, with regards to what I say, because these are merely just my thoughts and opinions. So with that said, let's get on to it. First up, we have the Great Sword. This is one of the beginner friendly weapons, so like the name and appearance suggests, this is a chonky sword. You move slow, you attack slow, you recover slow, but you hit extremely hard in exchange for that mobility loss. In fact, the great sword is capable of producing the highest damage in a single swing in the entire game. Generally with this weapon, you'll be adopting the hit and run style of fighting, so be on the lookout for openings where you can charge up and get the satisfaction of seeing those big numbers. Next up we have the longsword, another one of the beginner friendly weapons. It's got a long reach, decent movement speed, it has the potential to reach high amounts of DPS, it's capable of pulling off counters, and its biggest selling point? You get to feel like an anime swordsman. Frankly speaking, the only real downside is that you'll be tripping other players up with your long reach, so they might get mad at you. You know what, actually, they will get mad. Unless you aim for the tail. Maybe? Sword and Shield, also a very beginner friendly weapon. Um, I would say that these three weapons so far are the beginner friendly ones. So with this uh, Sword and Shield, You've got a short sword and a buckler, so as you would expect, it's got a pretty short reach, so you'll have trouble against the taller monsters and flying monsters, but this time you get to guard against attacks. Sword and Shield is also unique in the sense that it is the only weapon in the entire game that allows you to use your items without having to put the weapon away first, so it's a huge help when you're in a pinch and need a quick heal. Also with an armor skill called Wide Range, you can even play the support role and heal your friends when they're in a pinch. They will be eternally grateful to you for saving them a ride on the card. Next up we have Dual Blades. Um, it's got a short sword or a dagger, just like the sword and shield, but you have two of them this time. Again, the dual blades have a very short reach, but in exchange for that, you've got very high mobility, and it's probably the weapon that's closest to a, a hack and slash kind of playstyle. So glue yourself to the monster, dice them up, and you even have a demon mode to find dice the monsters instead. Also you can do a Levi. Up next we have the hammer. Booga Booga Caveman weapon. <laughs> Uh, you've got decent mobility, and the main objective of this weapon is to just bash the monster's skull in and give them brain hemorrhage. 
In other words, the hammer is capable of making the monsters fall over due to KO so that you and your teammates have a huge window to just wail on the poor creatures. But do note that because this is a blunt weapon, you cannot cut the tail and have to leave that to one of the sword users. Hunting on. Long story short, it's a musical hammer. Um, it's the least popular weapon as far as I know for some reason, but I actually like it a lot. Just like the hammer, it is a blunt weapon so you can also concuss monsters, but this time with the added benefit of blowing their eardrums out to buff yourself and your teammates. It's commonly seen as a support weapon due to its ability to buff players, but it is actually very capable of matching other weapons in terms of damage and if you feel slow with the weapon, just buff yourself and you'll practically be sprinting with it. Worry about your weapon bouncing off? Buff yourself! Teammate not doing enough damage? Buff them! It's definitely not a beginner friendly weapon though because of all the different songs that you can play so you'll likely be spending a lot of time referring to the guide on the top right and that can easily cut you if you're too focused on that. Up next we have the Lance. If you want to feel like a tank, this is the weapon for you. You have a big shield to cover yourself with and an even bigger stick to poke the monster's eyes out behind the safety of your shield. Now I can't say too much about the weapon because I've never used it before and I don't really intend to. All I know Lance users do is just poke, 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 hop, repeat. <laughs> the guarding animation does look pretty sick though, I can give it that much at least. And the countering aspect of this weapon is also kind of fun. So if you're into the counter focus playstyle, you might like it. Gun lens. Take the lance, add an explosive to the stick and there you go, gun lens. Just like the lance, your mobility is heavily restricted without the hops but you get to let off flashy explosions in the, in the monster's face. I also don't play this weapon much at all, so I can't really give much comments about it either. Gardens go BOOM! Switch Axe. This is one of the two transforming weapons in the game. There are a bunch of mechanics to learn about this weapon, but simply put, you have the Axe mode, where you have higher mobility and Sword mode, where you have less mobility for increased damage. It's also got one of the coolest attacks in my opinion, and definitely the most satisfying mount finisher. Like I mentioned, um, it's got mechanics to learn and keep track of during the fight, but once you're used to it, you'll probably have quite some fun with it. Up next, we have the Charge Blade. This is the other transforming weapon in the game. I would say that this is the weapon with the most amount of things to learn, so it can be rather daunting for people who have never used it before, but when you get the basics down, it is in my opinion one of, if not the most well-rounded weapon in the game. You have the sword mode where you have higher mobility and the ability to guard, and you have the axe mode which is generally slower but you can let out some big chunks of damage with a pretty long reach.
Insect Glaive. This is the only weapon that freely allows you to engage in aerial combat. It's got pretty high amounts of mobility and you are also given control of this thing called a Kinsect which you can send out to deal extra damage or have it extract essences from the monster which you can then ingest to provide yourself with some buffs. The aerial aspect of this weapon is what makes it stand out since it allows you to deal lots of mounting damage to trigger mounts on the monster and you get to fly around like a helicopter. Pretty cool if you ask me. And then we finally get to the ranged weapons. First up, it is the light bow gun. You have high mobility with this weapon, and because of that, you can play it with a run and gun style. With the bow guns, you have access to ammo types that can pretty much do anything that the game has to offer. Be it elemental damage, piercing shots, KOs, cutting tails, crowd control, you name it. The catch is, you have your ammo to watch out for because you can only carry so much to your hunts, so planning what to bring and ammo management mid-hunt is essential to playing the bowgun. Heavy bowgun this is the big brother of the light bow gun. With this weapon, you are slow in pretty much all aspects, including your dodge rolls, but you generally shoot heavier, more damaging ammunition compared to the light bow gun. You have access to the same types of ammo, but because of its weight, you can't quite run and gun with it. In exchange, however, you get to put a shield onto it, so whenever you're aiming down your sights, your character will automatically guard against incoming attacks. Now we get to the final weapon on the list and my personal main weapon, the bow. It has great mobility, it's capable of dishing out incredible DPS and just like the bow guns, you have crowd control options as well that come in the form of coatings. Apart from the close range coating, all other coatings are limited, so there's some ammo management element involved as well. You also have unlimited arrows, so no worries about that, but almost every single action you take will cause stamina, so on top of ammo management, you also have stamina management to deal with. So it's definitely not an easy weapon to get the hang of. And that was all 14 weapons gone through very briefly. Each and every single one of them have their own gimmicks. So I would recommend searching for you know weapon tutorials. But know that every weapon is viable and are capable of holding their own. Ultimately, you should go with the weapon that you like the most and best fits your playstyle. Not everything has to be meta and achieve the highest damage and fastest quest completion. Just focus on having fun. If you're having a hard time deciding on what you want, you can always bring them out on a couple of hunts, see if you like how the weapon works, you know, swap them out until you find one that fits you. So that will be it for lesson 2. And I will see you in lesson 3, where I will go over how you can test out these weapons. Hope you guys found this helpful, and as always, happy hunting hunters! <laughs>